Do you remember back in the day when uh, people were extremely fearful of rabies and it, it mostly used to be talked about because of the treatment for rabies, uh, people said you had to have, you know, 20 or 30 extremely painful large volume injection sub-Q into your abdomen. Um, the treatment is better now. Uh, it's still deadly and it's still something to be feared. So let's talk about it. Rabies is a deadly virus that is spread by the saliva or scratch uh, attack from an infected mammal. It can be fatal to humans, it can be fatal to animals. Once the uh, bite has occurred, it travels to the central nervous system. It then causes encephalitis or encephalomyelitis where it causes an infection in the brain and spinal fluid. Animals most likely to spread rabies include bats, coyotes, foxes, skunks, and raccoons. In just a little bit, I'm gonna give you some more facts that are very interesting about rabies, especially that whole topic of the fear of water. Is it really fear or is it something else? I've seen a lot of things going around where people are given a bottle of water um, who have the rabies virus and who are very ill. And they seem so afraid they cannot drink the water. But what's the real reason behind that? What part of the world is rabies most prevalent? It appears that um, it is centralized highest in India, um, in Africa, Asia, specific areas of South America um, is where you're going to see it the most. But there are actually two areas in the world that consider their countries to be rabies free and that is uh, Australia and the UK. Why is it still going on here in the United States? And why is it so many cats get rabies, right? So you think of it like the dogs or you bring them to a dog park, be careful, because what's happening is that people are anti-vaxxers and they're not just anti-vaxxers for themselves or their children, but they're animals too. It is the law in most states and in most countries that if you own an animal, you need to get them vaccinated. Um, but there are dogs roaming all around and there are plenty of dogs and cats that you're gonna visit at someone's house, for example, or you're gonna interact with, and you assume maybe that the dog or animal has been vaccinated, but they have not been vaccinated. It's the same reason that, say, measles is on the rise. If you don't vaccinate, then these extremely contagious deadly illnesses are going to increase or they're just never going to go away. From the time the bite occurs, the contact with um, an, another ill, animal is many days. It can be 10 days, it can be two weeks, and it can be even longer, which is kind of frightening because this whole thing about, oh, you would know if your dog has rabies when it interacted with that other animal because it, it would act aggressive, it would drool a lot, and it wouldn't drink water. Let's see if it'll drink water or eat. But they do drink water and they do eat, even if they have the infection going on. And that's often because those are late stage symptoms. So you can't just uh, uh, consider the water theory whether or not that animal has rabies or that human has rabies. What are the symptoms in humans? It's a lot like, and I've done a couple videos on this, I believe, um, encephalitis or meningitis. When, when you have an illness, bacterial, viral, that affects the brain and spinal cord, the symptoms are like symptoms. What about personality changes, confusion, confusion irritability, uh, change in personality? I know when I had meningitis, I remember, you know, the doctors during and even uh, at follow-up always asked the person I was with at the appointment, is her personality different? Do you see a change in uh, the way that she normally once was. So when people come into the hospital with um, a change in their mental status, it can mean a lot of things, but that is one of the symptoms. Extreme sensitivity to bright light, sound, and touch. That can be humans, that can be animals. So you're going to see this kind of thing in dogs or cats too. So, but remember, um, the biggest key here is you might not see those symptoms right away, but yet your animal still has been bit or scratched or mauled or some wild animal in your backyard has made its way in and is messing around with your pets and your pets haven't been, been vaccinated you still have to talk to your veterinarian because if your animal is vaccinated uh, against rabies and you've done the um, follow-up booster vaccines, you still want to get another booster. So that's just what they say the protocol is now. 
what if it's a human? You want it immediately. You don't wait for symptoms. You go straight into urgent care emergency room or your doctor with any animal attack on you, on uh, you know the neighbor's dog bit you, those sorts of things, or a stray animal that you thought was friendly, or how about again those dog parks? <laughs> can tell I'm not really for them because um, a lot of things can happen in those dog parts. So if you or your pet gets bit, you're going to want to see a provider and see what they recommend. The um, A lot of people f back in the day, I remember this so many years ago, they were so fearful of the treatment that they wouldn't go in um, because of these terrible painful injections into the abdomen. They, they didn't want to deal with it. Uh, it's fatal. If you don't get treated for rabies and the symptoms have set in to the nervous system, central nervous system, and the person or the animal becomes very ill, it is fatal. It's better to go and just be safe and see what the physician or provider is going to order. And the injections now are no different than, say, getting a shot or the flu. Or so what's the standard treatment? So according to the CDC, the standard treatment is called PEP, which is prompt post-exposure prophylactic treatment. So prophylactic means to prevent. So post-exposure of this um, animal bite uh, to yourself is going to result in this treatment. So that means washing the wound, washing thoroughly after any bite or scratch or attack, getting a vaccine, getting the appropriate rabies treatment shots, which I believe are, uh, I don't have it right here, but I think it's initial, then it's like four after that. And they're all injections into the arm now. Um, I did read somewhere of an unusual thing about uh, the treatment being directly into the wound at the very beginning. Oh yeah, wait a minute. I found it in my notes. You may also need RIG, which is the rabies immunoglobulins, which is a liquid medication that's injected straight into the wound or given orally. How about some fun facts? Not so much fun. How about some interesting facts about rabies that maybe you have never known about? Fact number one. So the highest place in the world that has rabies, ooh, I think I may have already mentioned this, it's India. And the World Health Organization is saying that about 160 people a day lose their lives to rabies. And remember, it's preventable. Fact number two. Can indoor cats get rabies? Yes, they can. Make sure that your pets are vaccinated. That's their best chance of survival. Um, but they still can get it. How do they get it? Oh, because people don't vaccinate. So they don't vaccinate their pets either. And then your cat gets out or you're in, your cat gets out or you're in the backyard, your cat gets bit or your cat's playing with another animal across the street. Or hydrophobia. But what's really happening there is that it's the, the muscle spasms that are going to go on in the throat are just so painful. It's the fear of this intense pain, this inability really to swallow the water because some things that you'll see if you look at uh, people want to drink the water. They Children are handed the water. They want to drink it. They try so hard to drink it. They cannot swallow it. So it's more about the spasms that are going on in the throat and the inability to coordinate this. And they're very ill. These, this is uh, more in the advanced uh, stage of the rabies illness. Fact number four. Is there a rabies vaccine for humans? Yes, there is. And the people who tend to take that would be people going to countries of higher risk for rabies or they're doing things um, that puts them at high risk. Fact number five. Let's talk about whales. Can whales get rabies? Yes, whales can get rabies. Let's end with just knowing that rabies is still out there. It is very contagious. Humans can get it. All mammals can get it. And once it develops into the central nervous system, it is fatal. Um, getting vaccines is the only way to have the best protection for the animals, for your pets. Talk about it with your veterinarian. Thanks for watching.